Hello, dear brothers and sisters. So happy to be back to share the word of the Lord. So today's message is called First Love. And that's what the Lord wants to talk about today. I hope you guys are having a blessed week. Hallelujah. And the Daniel fast ended and it was amazing. It was just so beautiful to see how God does everything. And I know that sometimes people can say like the Daniel fast is not a fast, which I agree with like 50% because it's not like a true fast where you're not like eating food and you're not eating water, but it is a fast in the way where you are restraining yourself um, for a period of time. You're restraining yourself from the things that you love. Obviously, everybody loves, you know, grilled shrimp, grilled steak, grilled salmon, rice, beans, pasta, you know, whatever you like to eat carved or they taste so good. And obviously, when you set in your heart a time to separate yourself from the things that we pay so much attention to, we think about food a lot. Our kind of day goes revolved around food, no matter like if we don't like to acknowledge it, we think about like, oh, what are we going to eat for lunch? What are we going to eat for breakfast? What are we going to eat for snacks? What are, you gonna, what are we going to eat for dinner? I mean, we go to the grocery store and we prepare for the week because it brings us joy and it brings us excitement to think about, you know, food that we're going to eat. And, you know, also it's kind of difficult because a lot of the times when we are around people they are, you know, eating the things that they want. And sometimes when you have set yourself apart to restrain yourself from like having these things, you also have to, you know, restrain yourself from people because you are, you know, you don't have to, but I just think it's always nice when you are spending that time with God, those whatever days when God said 10. So for those 10 days, you separate yourself from the things of the world, which obviously is all the apps, all like the social media, hearing uh, from other people. I have chosen that, um, well, I was doing my fast, my, you know, Daniel fast, that I wasn't going to be listening to any uh, voices on the social media, I was only going to listen to the Lord because that's what I wanted. I wanted to hear from the Lord and God came through in a lot of areas in my life that I needed him to come through and got areas that I didn't even think I wasn't even thinking about those areas, but God knows everything that he's doing. And, you know, at the time appropriately, I will talk about those things when God allows me to. But I was just amazing, you know, to just be also what I, I learned is about being still and being still in the quietness. Another thing that I didn't wasn't asking the Lord for or even thinking about I was thinking about other stuff. But God came through in areas of my life that I wasn't even asking him for or I didn't even like uh, think about. He just came through in areas that were unexpected so hallelujah to him and it's just always good to try to silence so many voices and so many things that we can be hearing but sometimes you just need to be still and know that he is god and just spend time in quietness and and just listening to him and just spending time with him sometimes you don't even need to talk sometimes it's just being with him with nothing going on no music no pastor preaching nothing just you and the lord spending spending quality time together hallelujah so today we'll be, be talking about first love and i will begin with prayer and we'll get right into the word heavenly father in the mighty name of jesus we come before you lord we just love you we adore you God, you are our first love, Father God, ever since the day, Father God, that we locked eyes, Father God, you have been everything that I've ever wanted and everything that I've ever needed, my Lord. And today we will be talking about you, my Lord. And I just pray, Father God, that you would open up the airways, Father God, that you would bring your people, Father God, 
from the everywhere, Father God, from the east, north, west, and the south, Father God, to hear from you, Father God, the word that you have prepared in heaven, Father God, to deliver to your people, Father God. You're not a God that reuses words, Father God. You're a God that's always speaking. Every word is always fresh. Every word is always anointed, Father God. And we just thank you, God, for speaking into our lives in the season that we're in right now. And I just thank you, Lord, that you will have your way. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. So the Lord wants to talk about first love. And today we'll be talking about first love. And we're going to start with the book of Revelation 2. And um, because that's, you know, that's the book of the first love. Then we know that that's what God wants. So we will begin with that and then we will just, you know, go as the spirit leads us. Okay, so Revelation 2, and it says, To the angel of the church of Ephesus, these things, these things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand. He who walks in the midst of the seven golden lapstones. I know your works, your labor, your patience. And then you cannot bear those who are evil. So God and um and these churches, he's always starts off with the things that they're doing good, right? He's saying right there, I know your works, your labor, your patience, and then you cannot bear with those who are evil. So those are the good things of the of the church of Ephesians that they are, you know, it says, I know your works, your labor, your patience. So God says, like, I know your works, you're working for me, and I know your patience, and I also know that you cannot tolerate those people that are evil. And it says, and you have tested those who say they are apostles that are not. So these people also have discernment. They have discernment to whether the word that is coming forward is from a person that is truly from the Lord, or it's a fake person. It says right here. And it says, those that say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars, and you have persevered, and have patience, and have labored for my namesake, and have not become worry. 2-4, it says, nevertheless, and this is the part that we focus on. Number 2-4, it says, nevertheless, I have this thing against you, that you have left your first love. So remember that God is saying you're doing all these things and when the world and the world, everything looks good in the world. It looks like, you know, you're working for the Lord and you're like, you have discernment, but God is saying in your heart, you have left me in your heart. You have left your first love. So you necessarily didn't leave the church. You're still in the church. You're still working for the Lord. You're still having discernment. But in your heart, God doesn't hold the number one place like he used to once you first gave your life to him. Once you first gave your life to him. And we know about that love that, that we feel when we first come to the Lord. We have like this love and it just feels amazing. It feels like overflowing. It feels like ecstasy. It feels like something new, something fresh, like when you really meet a guy and it's just so exciting and you might, gosh, all you, you can't stop thinking about him. All you want to do is talk to him all night and all morning. And all you want to do is like stay in the car and talk for hours and get to know them about their whole life. And that's how it is when we come to know the Lord, we're so in love with him. And we're like, oh my gosh, the Lord. And he caught and he cast us out you know, evil spirits and he heals and he delivers and you just want to read the Bible all day and you just want to read the Bible all night and we are just in love. But as the trials and the tests start happening in our lives, the enemy tries to have his way where he wants to cool us down to where so we can, the enemy tries to break us to pieces. The enemy tries to come in. The, the, the Bible says the enemy tries to come in like a flood, but the Lord will raise up a standard against the enemy. So the enemy will come in with hardship so you can get worn out and you can be beat down. And the enemy would love to just come in and, and bring discord and just bring confusion and bring um, just all kinds of things against God and it says and make you believe that the Lord is not for you that the Lord doesn't love you and somehow if you start believing the lies of the enemy that the Lord is not for you that God is not for you you start entertaining those negative thoughts and as you entertain those, those negative thoughts 
your love starts to die off for God. And we has things are going on in our lives, the, the trials and the tribulations and the things that start happening in our lives. We start wanting not to deal, not to deal with the things of this world. And we want to escape and we start going to our cell phone so much of the time that we spend our day, even if it's for Christian stuff. We still want to get away, get away, get away, get away. And somehow the things that we used to run to, we used to run to Lord, we used to run to Jesus, we used to run to him. Somehow we don't run to him anymore. We start running to distractions and to other things. And in our heart, it starts dying off. The love that we once had, it starts cooling off. And then we're still at the church and we're still serving at the church and we're still doing things at the church. But the fire and the passion that we had in our heart is no longer there. The fire and the passion that we had is dead. It's dying. It's dying. And then the Lord says, and the Lord says in 2 4, it says, Nevertheless, I have this thing against you that you have left. You left. You checked out. You're not there anymore. You left. Imagine how it feels when people leave us. Just think about the pain that we cause the Lord. Imagine all the times that we have loved people and the people have left us. It feels horrible. It feels like such the worst thing that we can ever go through is, um, is being betrayed because you open your heart to that person you open your life to that person. You welcome them in your house. You know, you share with them your secrets and then they leave. And then a part of you, you know, is not a part of you. You become broken. You become broken and you feel abused. And that was what the Lord feels when we come to the Lord. And we're like, oh, Jesus, we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. And then somehow... In our heart, we start walking away from him little by little without even probably noticing because nobody wants to leave the Lord. Like I, I will, I can't think of anybody wanting to leave the Lord because why would anyone want to leave the Lord? But, but that's what the Lord is saying here. And two forces, nevertheless, I have this thing against you that you have left your first love. So God is saying he feels that you left, that you left, that you left, and that you left, and that you left your first love. God is saying, I was supposed to be you, your first love, and you left me. Number five, it says, remember, therefore, where you have fallen. God is saying, look at you. Look at how far you've fallen. God is saying, look how far you've fallen. It says, repent and do, and do the first works. God is saying, repent and go back. To how you used to go be go back and do the things that you used to be doing go back and return to the things that you did at the beginning it says repent so number one is remorse repent it says repent i do the first works or else i will come to you quickly and remove your lamp stamp from its place unless you repent god is saying the place that god has given the place that the lord has given given his people god is saying if you do not repent from where you're heading at i will come and take away your lamp stamp your lamp stamp your lamp stamp your place that god has given you don't don't let nobody when the, when the message that the lord did uh um, i'm not sure but it wasn't too long ago and it says let no man take your crown and this is the same thing right here don't let nobody take your lamp stamp from its place unless you repent it says, but this you, you have. It says, but this you, you have th that um, repent before where you have fallen, repent and do the first works or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lamp stamps. And it says, but this you have that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit of the churches has to say. To him who overcomes, I will give him to eat from the tree of life which is in the midst of paradise. God is saying he wants you to overcome. God is saying if he who overcomes, I will give him the right to live to the tree of life, which is in the midst of paradise. Hallelujah. So that was the, 
that was the introduction of where God wanted to to start off because that's just that's the foundation of where we need to be all of us all of us all of us I myself have to remember and to think back of like how I was how it was when we barely came to Christ I remember when I barely came to Christ I was wanted to go to every every Christian concert and I wanted to volunteer and everything that I could volunteer. And I remember like the Greg Laurie harvesting. I was just like, oh, I want to do that. I want to do that. And obviously, and then the churches, I was like, I want to serve. I want to serve. I want to be doing this and this and this and this. But has the trials and the tribulations and the stings of life start to come? I know that the enemy tries to to wear you out the enemy tries to like just let those things that are going on in our life become bigger than the lord and to and to try to take us away from the only thing that can save us which is the lord so god wants us to remember where the works that we did and what we did at the beginning it's not about all the works that we do in church but it's all it's all about the heart it's all about the heart and then we're going to go to um to Hosea uh, 4. Hosea 4, it says, Hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel, for the Lord brings a charge against the inhabitants of the land. So we know that Israel is the chosen nation of the Lord. But even though they are chosen, they have still done wrong. And God is holy and he needs to, and he will punish and he will get revenge on those people that deliberately know what they should do. And they still choose to not obey the Lord. So God is not like, God doesn't have favorites, like in places where you work so that, you know, they have their favorites and they can do whatever they want and they don't get in trouble. No, that's not how the Lord is. The Lord is the same to everyone. And the Lord is a rightful judge. And he will come and, and get an account of the people that have not following his ways. So even though Jerusalem, Israel, Israel is a chosen nation, God will still deal with them before their disobedience. Because we know that their people are, there's people around. So Israel is a chosen nation. And because of they disobey, then the people around will disobey and it makes God look wrong and God will not tolerate it. So it says here, hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel, for the Lord brings a charge against the inhabitants of the land. It's saying there's no truth or mercy or knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break all restraint with bloodshed upon bloodshed. Therefore, the land will mourn and everyone who dwells there will be waste away with the beasts of the field and the birds of the sea. Even the fish of the sea will be taken away. Now let no man contend or rebuke another for your people. This is where it starts. Like we're, I always like to read like the whole paragraph because it's very important that you understand the paragraph because sometimes I feel like pastors will just get one sentence and then they make this whole preaching session of this one sentence and I like to read the, the paragraph so you can understand everything that the Lord has to say. So you can understand the beginning and you can understand what he's really saying and you can understand the end. I don't like when pastors take away one sentence and then they make this whole this whole sermon about this one sentence. And then when you go back to read the paragraph, it's nothing to do with what they say. And so it's very important that you understand what God is saying from the beginning to the end in his word not in the people's message. I understand that sometimes you use one to back up like a whole thing, but you're not going to just get one and like this have like this whole thing with other scriptures. So that's why I like to read everything. So four, four. So this is where the Lord starts. Now let no man contend or rebuke another for your people are like those who contend with the priest. It says, therefore, you shall stumble in the day. The pro It says the prophet shall also stumble in the night. So God is saying here that the people, the priest, which are people that God has chosen 
And it says, and the priest shall also stumble. So the people that God has put in charge, God can't even trust them because they themselves are crooked and they're bad and they're cheaters and they're stealers and they're lying and all these things. It says, therefore, you shall stumble in the day. The prophet shall also stumble with you in the night. I will also destroy your mother. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So here God is saying, you're destroyed for lack of knowledge because instead of seeking my word, you keep on seeking man and man is not God. Man has defects, but God doesn't. So we got to seek the Lord first. It says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected the truth. I will also reject you from being my priest. So God is saying, you have rejected the truth of what I have told you and you have done whatever you want. Now God is saying, now you can't serve me. You cannot be my priest because you have rejected knowledge. It says, because you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. The more they increase, the more they sin. I will also change their glory into shame. They eat up the sin of my people and their heart is set on their iniquity. And it shall be like people, like priests. So I will punish them for their ways and reward them for their deed. For they shall eat, but not have enough. They shall commit harlotry, but not increase because they have ceased obeying the Lord. Harlotry. Because we are married to the Lord. And when we decide to go our own ways and to do our own things, God is saying you have committed harlotry. And the Bible harlot is a whore. You have committed whoreness and you have cheated on God and done things. Everybody does different things. But in this one, it's, it's going to move on and it's going to talk about, you know, God will explain. 11, harlotry, wine, and new white and new wine enslaves the heart. My people ask counsel from their wooden idols and their staff informs them for the spirit of harlotry has caused them to stray. So here the Lord is saying, and instead of coming to me for knowledge, you continue to go to your old ways, to your old ancestors, to your old people, to the old ways you used to do things. But God is saying, now the spirit of harlotry has caused you to err. So the same thing that you think is going to deliver you, it's the same, same thing that causes you to, to backslide, to slip. And then saying, and they have played the harlot against their God. They offer sacrifices on the mountaintop and burn incense on the hills under oaks, poplar, and terebinths because their shade is good. Therefore, your daughters commit harlotry and your brides commit adultery. And so that's us. That's We are the bride of Christ. We have made a vow and we have made a, a commitment. And the Lord is expecting us that we keep it. It says, and your brides commit adultery. I will not punish your daughters when they commit harlotry. Nor your brides when they commit adultery. For the men themselves go apart with harlots. That's all sad. And it says, and offer sacrifices with a ritual harlot. That is so disgusting. So here it is itself, here itself it's saying, and in the in the in the in the Bible is saying that the people that used to do rituals to other gods and have orgies, they used to go out on the mountaintops and do these things, you know? Because they don't want to, they don't want nobody to know, but the Lord knows everything. And it's saying here, I will not punish your daughters when they commit harlotry, nor your brides when they commit harlotry. It's saying, for the men themselves go apart with heartless, heartlets and offer sacrifices with a ritual harlot. Therefore, people do not understand they will be trampled. Though you, Israel, play the harlot, let not Judah offend. Do not come up to Gilgal, nor go up to Beth Aben, nor swear an oath, saying, as the Lord lives. For Israel is like a stubborn, for Israel is stubborn, like a stubborn calf. Now let now the Lord will let them forage like a lamb in the open country. Ephraim is joined to idols. Let him alone. Their drink is rebellion. They commit harlotry continuously. Her, ruler, her rulers dearly love dishonor. The wind has wrapped her up in its wings. And they shall be ashamed because of their sacrifices. So God is saying here, no matter what way, shape, or form you have you remove your heart from the Lord. The Lord is calling his people back. The Lord is calling his people back. And he's saying, no matter if you're going to wooden idols, no matter if you're going to harlots, no matter what you're doing, the Lord is calling you back. And God is saying to repent, 
to repent before he takes away your lampstand. And then we go, and then on Jeremiah 2 2, it says, Go and cry and hearing of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I remember you. I remember the kindness of your youth, the love of your betrothal, betrothal, when you went after me in the wilderness in a land not sown. So God is saying, I remember you. I remember when you burly came to me. I remember when you burly became my wife. It's so sad. Oh, my Lord. It says, go and cry in the hearing of Jerusalem, saying, thus says the Lord, I remember the kindness of your youth, the love of your betrayal, when you went after me in the wilderness in a land not sown. That's where the Lord wants us. It says, when you went after me in the wilderness, in the wilderness, when when everything is dry, when you have nothing, God is like, come back to me how you were. Like in the wilderness, when you have nothing, when we're empty, when we're dry, when we have nothing and we come seeking after the Lord, the Lord is saying, come, come back, come back to me, the Lord says. And then we're going to go back. It, so as I was uh, studying for this, the Lord kept on saying zeal and fire. Because I was asking him, Lord, when when you say, return to your first love, like what, what is missing? What is missing? What is missing? What is it that we're missing when you say return to your first love? And he said, zeal, zeal and fire. That means like passion, the passion that you have to want something. God is saying the passion is missing. It's like fire, the fire the fire, the fire, the flame that once was sharp, the fire that once had the fuel, which is the word of God, the fire is dying out. The passion and the fuel is, is dying out. Um, we're going to go to Revelation 3.14. Revelation 3.14. Revelation 3.14 says, and it's so funny because as I was asking the Lord and talking to the Lord, right? He talked about Revelation 2, 1, his first love. But then he gave me another, another scripture. And the scripture came from the book of Revelation. But as you read what where he gets the scripture from, he gets it from the scripture when he's talking to the lukewarm church. So see the correlation. First love, you left your first love. And then the lukewarm church, you're in the middle. You're not hot and you're not cold. You are lukewarm. It says here, and to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans writes, these things says the amen, the faithful and true witness in the beginning of the creation of God. It says, I know your works, that you are neither hot, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were cold or hot. So then you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot. I will vomit you out of my mouth because you say I'm rich. I have become wealthy and I have need of nothing. I do not know that it says, and you do not know that you are wretched. You are miserable. You are poor. You are blind and you're naked. I love that. God is saying, oh, you have money. And he's like, but you are wretched. You have nothing. God is saying, you think in your eyes that you're something when you're nothing. And it says, I, they says, I have become rich. I have become wealthy and I have need of nothing. And then the Bible says, Jesus says, and do not know that you are wretched, you are miserable, you are poor, you're blind, and you're naked. And Jesus, I love it when Jesus comes to talk because when Jesus talks, it's like it's like fire. It's like amazing. It's like nobody expects it. But when he speaks, he just like gets it's just like oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Because it's so straight to the point. He doesn't beat around the bush. But it's so, it just hits you in the soul and it just hits you in the spirit. It just hits you so hard. It says number 18, it says, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich. So God is saying richness is not the possessions that you have. But God is saying, if you have me, then you are really rich. It says, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich. And white garments that you may be clothed 
that your shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. And this is the scripture that the Lord talked to me that going along with the whole message. It was uh, 319. It says, as many as I love, I rebuke and, as, and, I, and I chastise. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Remember, number one, the the not uh when it, the when it said the first love, it said be zealous and repent. God is expecting us to be zealous and to repent. And then when you look at the dictionary, what does the word zealous mean? When you look at the word as a zealous, it says to have ardor. A R D O R. In Spanish, is ardor, to have this passion, to have this fire, to have like this burning. And it says to have ardor or fervor of spirit. The person, when I look at fervor and fire and their spirit, I think about Paul, the apostle. He was fire. He was on fire for the Lord. He went preaching everywhere. And no matter how much, no matter how much pain he went through, no matter what, he continued to have faith and he continued to push through and he continued to persevere and he continued to 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 worship the Lord and 12 midnight and then the prison doors were open. He didn't let nothing stop him, all the things that he went through. He was a man of fire, a passion for the Lord. And that's who he was before the Lord, before bad stuff. But then when the God got a, a, a hold of him, he became that that fervor, that man that was full of seal, but he used it for the Lord. And I'll, I'll, I feel that God has given us a passion for something even before we knew him. The only difference is that when we come to know him, we have to use our, our gifts that he's given us for his glory. Hallelujah. So right, right there, it says, um, 319 it says as many as i love i rebuke and i chastise so, so god is saying i love you i will rebuke you and i will chastise you it says therefore be zealous and repent it says behold i stand at the door at the door and knock if anyone hears my voice and opens the door i will come and dine with him and him with me to him who overcomes again overcomes this is a fight and you need to be strong and fight the good fight of faith that says to him who overcomes, I will grant him to sit with me on the, the throne and I will overcome and sat down with his father on the throne. He has a near, let him hear. So the reward for, for, for being able to, for being able to overcome is to be in heaven with Jesus. That is a reward. Hallelujah. In Romans 12, 11, it says, do not be slothful in zeal, be fervent in spirit. Hallelujah. That's what the Lord wants. In the Bible, there's a scripture and it also says, stir up the gift of God that is in you. Paul said that. Then we're going to go to uh, Hosea 5.15. Um, the <laughs> we're gonna go to Hosea five fifteen. Hosea five fifteen. In Hosea five fifteen. It says, "I will return to my place." Till they acknowledge their offense. So God is saying, okay, I'm leaving. You don't want to, you don't want me to be here with you. You don't want me to be here. And he's saying, okay, I'm leaving. I'm going to my place. It says, I will return again to my place till they acknowledge their offense. It says, then they will seek my face. In their affliction, they will earnestly seek me. So God is saying that if we do not repent and come to the Lord, the affliction will come and then there we will, we will seek him, but don't let for those things to happen. Don't let for, for God to allow affliction into our lives for us to return and to worship the Lord. So that was the word that the Lord had today. It was so beautiful because 
I love God. I love God. I love God. And I love God. I love God because the churches will tell you things that make you feel good and that you don't need to change anything about your life where you can just go to church, hear a message. I'm not saying all the churches. I'm saying like, you know, most of them, they will tell you something that sounds good. So you go and you feel good and then you go home and then you don't change anything about you. You continue to just live this life, this defeated life. A lot of times Christians live defeated lives where they're not growing, they're not changing, and they're the same. They are stagnant. And the reason is because you need to change. We need to change. We need to change. We need to grow. We need to go from glory to glory to the next level to the next level. So if God is speaking, we need to say, yes, word. Yes, Lord. What is it that is in my life that is affecting me, that is affecting me from growing, from spiritually receiving everything that you have for me? We can't just be okay because we want to be on our phones and it's easy just to be on our on our phones and just forget about everything. I, I don't want to go, like, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to do this. I don't want to clean. I don't want to go here. I just want to be on my phone. I just want to lay down and I just want to do nothing. But that's not what God wants from us. God wants us to come up higher. God wants us to come up higher and to fulfill everything that the Lord has. God didn't come to earth to go through all that he went through to die on the cross for us just to do nothing in this lifetime. We all have a purpose that must be fulfilled. Unless that purpose is fulfilled, we will never be happy. We will never be happy until we do what God has asked us to do. And that I am sure 100%. Unless we do the very thing that God has asked us to do, we will not have any joy and we will not have any happiness because we will be in disobedience to the Lord. And these things that the enemy brings into our life, whether it's things that we're going through, whether it's our phone, whether it's food, whether it's uh, whatever it is that the enemy will try to bring to distract us from fulfilling our God-given purpose to seek the Lord for direction, to seek the Lord for purpose, and not just to do it for things that we get out of it, but we do it for God. Whatever we do, do it as unto the Lord and not unto man, right? We are seeking the Lord to see what is it that you want. When I did the when I did the 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 Daniel the, the the Daniel fast, I didn't I didn't do it to ask God for anything. I really had no agenda doing it. I just knew that I needed to. I needed I needed to die to myself. I needed to to look for the Lord and I needed to ask Him. What is it that you need from me this year? This twenty twenty four. What is the Lord? I didn't go and I didn't have like a in a like a in like an agenda. I didn't have like this thing that I was like, God, I want you to this is why I'm doing it because of this. I literally, obviously, we all have things that we're praying for, but that's not why I did it. I I uh I did it because I, I wanted just to be with the Lord. I wanted just to to spend that time with him. I wanted to just be with him. And a lot of the times there's a lot of things that get in the way of us just being with him. And we are like, and we are like, uh, like Martha, we are so busy doing so much for everybody. You know, oh, I got to go to this. I got to go to the store and I got to go to work and I need to iron. I need to clean and I need to paint and I need to do this and this and this and this. And then, you know, the things of life and the things that are coming up and the things that work and the things we want and the things that church and the thing that people need. And we just have so much things going on. And then we begin to just separate from the Lord because we have so much going on. And then we be, we start timing the Lord like, oh my gosh, like, okay, I'm going to be here for 15 minutes. Okay. And then I'm going to, I'm going to, I got to do this and I got to do this and I got to do that. And I just feel like the spirit, that's not what the spirit wants. I just sense it for 2024 that God wants us to just forget about everything. Just forget about everything and just focus on Jesus. Just focus on him more than all the things that we want and more than all the things that we pray for. Just focus on the Lord and just focus on him. 
just be a Mary. Just be a Mary. Martha said, Jesus, Jesus, help Mary to help me with all these things and that I need to do. But then Jesus said, oh, Martha, Mary has chosen the better thing and it will not be taken away from her. And that's where the Lord wants us. The Lord wants us to be there for him, just to be listening to him and to sit at his feet. And the Lord loves his people. And the Lord is sad because the people have drifted so far from God. The people have drifted so far from his heart. The, the people said, the people worship me. But their hearts are far away from me. And God knows that, that God's that people are far from the Lord. You see it all around the churches. You see it. Uh, you have if you're discerning of spirits, you can see it. You just see it all around the church. You see it, and the fire is gone, the zeal is gone. And the Lord wants his people to come back to him. Just put away everything. Just put away all the distractions. Put away the phone. Fight with yourself. Fight with yourself because it is a fight. Of course it's a fight. Your flesh wants to be on the phone. But you have to say no. The spirit man is in charge. The spirit man is in charge. The spirit man is in charge. Before you go to sleep, read the word whether it's on your phone or whether you sit down and take 15, 20 minutes every night to, to hear from the Lord and just be with him. Just sit there and spend time with him. And before we go to bed, we want to again, grab our phone and we need, and we want to scroll, but no, just open the Bible. Just open the Bible. It says go and cry and hearing of Jerusalem. So this is the Lord saying, go and cry in the hearing of Jerusalem, says the Lord. I remember the kindness of your youth. The kindness of your youth, the love of your betrothal, when you went after me in a land not sown. It's very important that before we go to sleep, that the last thing that we have in our spirit is the word of God. Because the Bible says that the enemy comes at night to, to sow tares. And we cannot have that. We cannot have that. So we must resist the devil and then he will flee. Hallelujah. So that was a word that the Lord had. I pray that it spoke to you. Don't forget about it. Pray about it and ask the Lord, what is it in my life that I need to leave so I can have more of you, Lord? And repent and be zealous. Hallelujah. So I will close out with prayer. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord. We just thank you, my God, for this day. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. We just worship you, King of Kings. Hallelujah. You're on the throne. Oh, God. You're on the throne. Hallelujah, Father God. Nothing can stand against you, Father God. Nothing, Father God. All our problems, Father God, they have to bow down to the feet of Jesus. All our mindsets, Father God, they have to bow down to the feet of Jesus. All the mindsets have to bow down to the feet of Jesus. Hallelujah. We surrender everything to you, my God. We surrender our bodies, our minds, our brains, our spirit, our soul, Father God, to you. We submit it, Father God, to you. We humble ourselves under the mighty presence of God. Hallelujah, that at the right time you will exalt us, Lord. We submit our time to you. Hallelujah. We submit, Father God. We will not fight, Father God. We will not fight against your Holy Spirit. Father God, for you said, be holy for I am holy, thus saith the Lord, Father God. Help us to grow in our spirit, man, Father God. Help us to grow, Father God, like you, Father God, and stand up in stature, Father God, like the tree, Father God. 
the tree of cedar and Lebanon, Father God, standing strong, standing bold, Father God, against the lies of the enemy that will try to derail us from the lies of the enemy, Father God, casting down all imaginations and every high and lofty thing. Hallelujah, Lord, hallelujah. We give you all the honor and all the glory, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Father God. And when come into the throne of grace where we can obtain mercy and in times of trouble, Lord, hallelujah, Father God, we come to you, God, and we repent, my Lord, for putting people, things, places, phones, minds, thoughts before you, Father God, and wanting to leave your presence, Father God, to go be on our phones, to go watch TV, to go to go do other things, my Lord, but help us, Father God, may your mercy and your grace, Father God, buckle down our emotions and our feelings, Father God, that we will be able to serve you, Father God, that we will be able to be like Mary's Lord, to sit at the feet of Jesus, Father God, and nobody can take it away, Lord, help us to say no, when people uh, try to take advantage of us on, in our times or, or things, Father God, help us to say no, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord, for the people, Father God, that have decided, Father God, that they will return to you. Hallelujah, God. We, play, we pray an anointing over their life, Father God, to continue to follow you steadfast and wholeheartedly, Father God. And we just thank you, Father God, for this week. We ask that you bless it, Father God. Bless the work of our hands, Father God. Thank you for increase. Thank you for favor hallelujah wherever we go god we have the joseph anointing everywhere he went he prospered lord may we prosper father god for your glory father god and we just thank you we pray for our families father god to return to you we pray for our families to be zealous for you father god to pick up their bibles father god to fall down at their knees and worship you jesus father god there's nobody else. There's nothing else in this life that can ever satisfy us, Father God. And you, we fight everything. You are the living water that we need, Father God. For you, we thirst, Father God. And we pant like a like a deer, Father God, like a deer pants, Father God, for our streams of living water. And we have found it in you, Lord. And we just lift up our hands, Father God, and surrender of everything that has hurt us. We let go of the pain, Father God. We let go of the pain, Father God, and we let your holy water cleanse us, Father God, your living water, and we receive it, Father God. We forgive every person who has wronged us, God, and we just let go, Father God, and we just thank you, Father God, and we'll let you, Father God, get the glory for everything. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. I love you, and if God is willing, we'll see you guys next week, okay? Bye.